Do you feel as if you don't belong? Do you know you were meant for something more? Well, you were. Knowledge of who you are and where you really are from is within your reach. Join Janet Carol Lesson and Dr. Sasha Lesson as they search for the answers as they open up the Stargate to the cosmos. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stargate to the Cosmos. And I'm your host, Janet Carol Lesson, with my co host, Dr. Sasha Alex Lesson. Our producer is Deborah DeFranco, and you're listening to Revolution Radio Studio B. Our guest today is Dr. Louis Tory, and he has been with us a number of times. He's recognized in the Marquis Publication Board, Who is Who in America, and ranks among the world's top gifted mediums. He's a legitimate UFO contactee. He's had numerous close encounters of the fifth kind. Since 1985, he's been a medium, astrologer, UFO lecturer, and he has an uncanny ability to predict predict the future. He's helped thousands of people check their future and communicate with loved ones who have crossed over to the other side. He's a natural healer, a cancer survival survivor, a powerful motivation motivational speaker. I can't talk. A clinical hypnotherapist and he's authored many books. I have a website page for him on AquarianRadio.com and you can find links to his websites and he has a new movie out on Amazon Prime called Alien Contactee, Dr. Louis Turi. So, Dr. Lesson, before we bring on Louis, Dr. Turi, um, sound check, are you there? I am here, yes. and I want to thank you, Janet, for having me on your show. Oh, welcome. Yeah, I just wanted to check Dr. Lesson because last week he disappeared. Janet, can you Sash, hear me? can you speak? Janet. Yes, we can. Okay, now we've got everybody. Oh, okay. So, so you Going, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Dr. Turi uh, what his predictions are on uh, B- Joe Biden's vice presidential choice. I'm also going to ask whether he uh, thinks that uh, Trump is going to invalidate the election or uh, be elected or what, what's going to happen in the election. And most interesting to me of all, uh, when will AOC, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, be our leader? Well, this, this is three questions in one. <laughs> yes. Now, let me, let me tell you, uh, as far as President Trump is concerned, um, there is no way in a million years looking at his astrological chart that he will be reelected. However, as I predicted in 2016, unless the Russians again manipulate our elections, this president cannot be re-elected. That's what the stars said. Now time will tell. Now, there is much more to say about this president stars. Uh, president Trump was born with uh, a very, very negative dragon tail. The dragon tail that he was born with is in total sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius rules anything and everything that has to do with foreigners, foreign land, religion, the law, the pet world, and Sagittarius rules also the higher education, college and university. Now, Americans have elected a president that has a very, very negative set of stars as far as connecting with our ally and foreigners and foreign land is concerned. Now, This president had a wish since day one, and that is to put America in a box and to build a huge, powerful, wonderful wall that separated America from the world. Guess what? The wall is still being built as I'm talking to you. However, there is no more need of this wall because this wall has transformed into what we nowadays call COVID-19, COVID-19. Why? Well, the rules are very simple. The future is nothing else than the reincarnation of the thought. And humans are, including our president, more than 
bone flesh and nerves. Humans were born with the power to create. All humans were made in the image of God. That means you know it or not, you like it or not, you are all who are listening to this show, God and goddesses in training on this dense physical world, creating your reality. Let me go back a little bit here. The computers that you are using, the watch you're looking at the time, the car you drive, the city you live in once upon the time did not exist. We are creating our reality. Now, this is the most powerful man on the planet. He's in charge of the most powerful country on the planet. So he has access to millions and billions of people all around the world who vibrate like him, who don't like foreigners, who are atheists, who are uh, racist. And knowing that they vibrate at the speed of this president is enough to create the entire chaos that we are in. We are victimized by the negative process of a humongous mass of people thinking negative, thinking like our president. So, this being said, I repeat myself, I looked at this chart, there is absolutely no chance whatsoever, 150% looking at the stars, that this president will be re-elected. Okay? However, Keep in mind that the human will is much stronger than the stars and does not rationalize. There are people like Putin, Vladimir Putin, who just got a present, by the way, by President Trump by removing all this soldier from the German border. And those people are master in manipulating technology to make all these idiots out there who believe anything, who read anything, and accept it immediately without uh, investigating the truth or the fact. So unless the Russian again mess up with our election system, this president cannot be re-elected. I hope that helps. Uh, Louis, it, it seems inevitable that they're going to mess with it. Yep, uh, yep. And so it's perhaps a matter of degree. How much do they mess with it or something like that? Well, I, I can only translate the stars. Okay, um, the tail of the dragon. Uh, let me go back a couple of years ago. The tail of the dragon, a couple of years ago, or last two years, has been into the sign of Capricorn. Capricorn rules the government. Capricorn rules uh, the Illuminati. Capricorn rules large corporation. Capricorn rules the Eng England. The privileged select the king and the queen. And you know what happened with Brexit. You know what happened with the royal. And you know what happened with your government. That that have, that is, many of the members of the government are rotting in jail, and your president has been impeached. That is what happened last two years. Okay. Now. As of May 15, 2020, there is a new cosmic wind coming in, and that is uh, the tail of the dragon affecting the sign of Sagittarius. Now, this nasty dragon is conjuncting our president natal dragon, making the situation worse. So, let's look at America. America, July 4, 1776, is a cancer country. Okay? If you count from July to December, you're going to end up in the sixth house, July, August, September, October, November, December, December, Sagittarius, that's the sixth house of work and health of the United States. The United States is not working and the United States is very sick because of the natural negative thought process induced by the president and promoted by millions of people that gave birth to COVID-19. There is no accident, absolutely no accident in my cosmic work. There are only cosmic circumstances at work that are not understood by our infantile scientific community and by 99.9% .9 of normal people out there who have been indoctrinated either into religion or science. So that's where we're at. But it's going to get much, much more complicated. In about uh, 18 months from today, let me push you that far, the nasty, nasty upcoming scorpionic dragon will kind of force America to die and rebirth. It's going to be affecting the fifth house of creativity and the fifth house of children of the United States. 
In other words, we're going to lose a lot of kids. It could be a natural disaster. It could be sexual a transmitting virus again, a new one. Uh, or it could be a war. Or it could be something we can control. So I wish I had better news for you. But the reason why we are in this chaos is, again, because the scientific com- community and the religious matrixes, both of them are well organized, they have a lot of money, they control all the informations and indoctrinate people. Humanity has been detached from God's cosmic design. Humanity has been completely taken away from the cosmic code jurisdictions. In the name of science and religion, the true uh, ministry of Jesus, which is cosmic in nature, has been cast aside and ridiculed. So when you go against God, the real God, so to speak, and when you put science instead, uh, you are bringing a lot, a lot of karma to this planet. And that's where we're at. We are ignoring God, cosmic design. We are ignoring God, cosmic laws. And we are surviving, barely supported and endorsing both science and religion. And this is about to change because the age of Pisces, deception and illusion is going away. And the new age of Aquarius is making this world much, much smaller. In fact, because of this Aquarius energy, we are able to communicate from vast distance, from Phoenix to Hawaii or in Australia or anywhere I am on the air. So this new age of Aquarius is unifying the world. And a lot of people are not aware of those cosmic rules and they're freaking out because they, they think it's communism, uh, they think it's uh, whatever fear they share as our president. And they don't want to, to have any foreigners to communicate with us. Remember, America, July 4, 1776. It's a cancer country. America was born with the head of the dragon, the most powerful, the most positive energy in the second house of money in Leo. That's why America is set by God himself to make this country the leader of the world. And when you have a, a leader which is not cosmic conscious, which behaves like a bull in the shadow shop and changes his mind every two minutes, or when you elect a Gemini, now you have confusion and you have separatism. It's split. Gemini is two, four, six. Is the twins. So you have the right and you have the left. You can, you got the, the Republican and you have the conservative. You never ever America has been so split because we give power to a man who is not cosmic conscious and we are suffering his idiosyncrasy and suffering his stars. Again, pretty much like the German people giving power to Hitler and paid the price of giving such a power to a man who was evil uh, and who had a really negative set of stars. So, the chance of President Trump to be re-elected, as you said, are pretty high because of the Russian manipulation. But, again, I can only tell you from the star's point of view, he has no chance. Everything is against him. The tail of the dragon is on his seventh house. That is the public, the perception of the public. He even said himself, the world hates me. That's when you have the tail of the dragon in the seventh house, which regulates uh, the, the public and your connection with others. When you receive the tail in this house, it's impossible to be friend with no one, especially with his egocentric uh, attitude. So, this being said, It is important to remember, regardless of what the stars have in store for us, there is a higher order. There is karma to be paid. You know it or you don't know it. If you do not understand or respect the cosmic code, you are going to pay the price. And as I've mentioned many times on your show before, uh, Janet, um, because you do not see the other side of my hand, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. There are physical laws. You've got to stop at a red light. You've got to stop at a stop sign. You've got to follow the codification of thought, the rules established by the Bible. And God never came down and wrote no books, but he made the stars for that matter. So because you do not know about those rules, doesn't mean they are not real. Doesn't mean they don't exist. And if you mess those rules, pretty much like going, uh, knowing the red light or the stop sign, you're going to get killed. This is what's going on. Those mystical and spiritual laws have not been understood and respected. All in the name of manipulation, deception, in the name of power, in the name of control, in the name of greed, in the name of science and religion. That's where we're at. Yeah, I hope I make sense to you. Yes, you do. Okay, what was uh, your second question, Sasha? That was question one. First of all, Sasha, did you get your question answered? Or do you have more on that question? 
Um, Are you? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hello. Okay, I'm I'm back. Listen, uh, that that was wonderful, Louis. I just it really explains uh, so so very 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 much. Um, um, the the uh, this the other uh, question was about uh, Biden a selection yep, Biden. of a of president. Yeah, Biden is a Scorpio. The tail of the dragon will be moving in the sign of Scorpio in about two to two and a half years. So, if you can, let's go back to President Trump because I have even worse news for you as oh. far as his president is concerned. Oh. Um, um, he, president Trump was born in June, okay? If you count uh, from June to November, you're going to go into the sixth house, June, July, August, September, October, November. That's the sixth house of health and the sixth house of work of the President of the United States. Which means during this time, there is a lot of chances, 95% chance that this President is going to get really, really sick or he's going to get assassinated. Now remember, Scorpio was the FBI, the CIA. Uh, I don't want to go too deep into this type of information and create uh, a monster out there. But you know what? We're talking about two or three years down the line. Uh, and be between now and then, a lot of things are going to happen. As far as Biden is concerned, Biden is a Scorpio. Okay, So anytime you elect a president that is Scorpio, uh, it's like a a electing another uh, Kennedy. It's either he's going to get, uh, he won't finish his term because Scorpio is a sign of life and death. Okay, but the good news, he has the head of the dragon into the sign of Virgo. Virgo was health. Virgo was uh, uh, nature, uh, and that's why he's a fervent uh, supporter of um, maintaining this planet in a good health uh, and using natural means instead of gas and uh, fracking and, and all these uh, uh, hardcore uh, means of, of staying alive, of finding fossils. So what I'm trying to tell you, as far as health. As far as medicine, as far as insurance is concerned, um, if, if Biden become the president, which he should, uh, that's going to be a very serious upgrading of uh, um, bringing America to uh, a, a normal health system where you don't have to sell your house or lose your house if you get cancer. So there is a lot of a very, very important change involving insurances, involving health, involving uh, uh, climate change uh, when uh, this president is uh, uh, going to be doing his work. He's going to bring kind of a lot of bad luck on the religious uh, uh, field, on, the, on religion. Um, electing him means also the death of uh, the Pope. So there is so much uh, energy that are evolving, uh, bidden, but in many ways he'll be, uh, he'll be a much, much better president for the, 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 the short time he will run. So how is electing Biden going to remove the Pope? Is the Pope going to... Yeah, he has... To, yeah. Assassination yeah. or what? Well, he, he, he has his, uh, he, the stars of this president are all over the world. They run everything. Now you elect a new president, he has a new set of stars, and he's going to bring the good and bad, because there is no such a thing of good without bad, or, or the front without a bag, or God without a devil, or the day without a night, the yin and yang. So uh, electing this president will be a curse and a cross for anything that has to do with religion, for anything and everything that has to do with the pharmaceutical industry. Um, you know, I, I haven't done his chart yet. I'm waiting for him to get in the place of power. Uh, and, and then for your information, a day, a day before President Trump was elected, I ran his chart and everything that happened last five years is in this newsletter, which has been published, dated and printed. So you Google uh, Donald Trump for president and you put Dr. Turing and you're going to read every single thing that transpired last five years was fully predicted. Uh, that, that, you know, uh, Lewis, I, I really have to know, it's, it's, it's not just, uh, if there is an election, it's just as critical about the House of Representatives and the Senate, which blocks every kind of uh, uh, loving uh, help that the Democrats try to give to the populace. And so I yeah. really want to know, way beyond just the president, what do you think about the houses of the Congress? All I can tell you is in November the 3rd, it will be the beginning of the end of important phases of life for this president and for the world. 
and for everyone who is under the jurisdiction of this president. You know, you're coming to me in a logical, rational way when I'm delegating with the archetypal realm of supracosmic consciousness. So I cannot uh, relate to you and answer you in a practical way. And if I had to understand what was going on with the House of Representatives, that means I would have to do everybody's chart. I can do that. So I have to stay with the main players. And I tell you what's going on with Trump, and I tell you what will happen if we elect uh, 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 Biden. Do I make sense? I have to stay with yeah. the intuition. I have to stay with the intuitional domain of my work. And then from there, you just have to stand by and wait and see. And in a few years from now, you're going to tell me, my gosh, you were right, Dr. Tree. Because the future has and will always be my utmost faithful witness. That's my curse or oh, my blessing. I don't know. I don't know sometimes if it's a curse or a blessing to be able to give exact date of the last two earthquakes that used to transpire, to talk about uh, explosion, and the next thing you know, there is an explosion. It, it, it's all there well before you see the news. But unless you are investigated my work, unless you know who I am, uh, I'm not asking you to become a student and build up your cosmic consciousness. You can't do that uh, by listening to me. Uh, you have to stay with me for a week, uh, six or seven hours a day before you understand the structure of the universe and be able to make predictions like all my students do. It's a matter of education. Knowledge is power. Ignorance is evil. So as far as I'm concerned, I want to stay objective. I don't want to mingle politics within my work uh, because there is nothing political. Sad enough, the president is a president and it involves politics. So you know, if I was dealing with a mechanic, if I was dealing with a doctor, it would be a different situation. But we're dealing with President Trump. So that means I have to involve politics. But my work is spiritual in nature and it's futuristic and predictive in nature. It's not political. Sad enough, there is a lot of people that are emotionally so desperately connected for or against this president. Some are going to love me for hearing what I'm saying and some are going to hate the hell out of me because they don't have enough evolution in their spirit to understand that it got nothing to do with their choice, with their political choice. And, but it's their emotion that is, dictating, that is dictating their reaction. And the law is very clear. Um, you know, in the eternal battle between emotions and uh, uh, critical thinking, emotion always override your critical thinking and you will always lose. That's why there's people that kill each other, they become crazy, they lose their jobs and because of emotion override the, the, the logic. And that's always been the problem with any human being. So learning how to control your emotions and never assume and investigate is something that idiots don't do. And sad enough, plenty of those out there. But there is also God thanks for that, the superhuman, not the subhuman. There's a lot of superhuman that are listening to your show that can relate to you, can relate to me, can relate to all, to everybody, to all your family out there. And then these are the ones that um, are going to progress. The, all the other ones are reptilians infected. They, they got no help. And this is why on my movie on um, Amazon, uh, 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 Amazon Prime, uh, 200,000 200, people listening to, 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 to that show, 75% uh, have given me five stars. And then the other ones are the people that are envious. They have uh, in them an inferiority or a uh, superiority complex, God knows what. Some are much too rational, too practical. Their UCI or unique celestial identity is too earthy. They cannot accept the reality of extraterrestrials. Uh, some people uh, will uh, assure you that um, I am a nut case and needs mental evaluation and all the people who have endorsed me are exactly like me and this guy is the only one which is sane. So this is what you get out there. Um, people can only relate to you because of their intelligence their experiences, their educations, and most of all, they are stars. And there is no one single human being out there that has the same stars. This is why the problem starts in the core of the family. Because you may 150% be related. You are related genetically to your family, DNA-wise. You may look like mom and dad, your brother, your sisters, but in no way, in a million years, you're going to think, behave, or create like you, your brother or your sister. In fact, much of the time, family members are your biggest strangers. So it, it all has to do with uh, uh, learning to understand God's cosmic design and in uh, reuniting all uh, ourselves through the divine. You know, religion, there is 785 different religions that were created by the reptilians to create chaos. 
We know that religions have killed more people than all the disease, natural disaster and virus uh, combined together. So we know that that is a fact. That's why the reptilians created those religions. Okay, I am Christian because I was born in Europe, in France, and because my family before me were born there too. But if I was born in the Middle East or in Asia, I wouldn't be a Christian. So you already curse by the location of your birth with a codification of thought that you have to follow because it was induced to you. That's indoctrination. Okay, now. When it comes to astrology, it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, a French, white, blue, green, whatever it is. You have a, a sun sign, you have a moon sign, you have a rising, you have a dragon. So understanding uh, your position, uh, your cosmic nature, will make you more uh, understanding of other people, sins and virtue, and strengths and weaknesses, so to speak. But I don't think the U.S. Department of Education will have me or my student to teach the kids. Because, uh, as I said, they have money, they have control, and they control the information. They don't want me there. And then, as, as I was saying on my last radio show, you know, it, it, you, a child has to swallow 2,000 years of human evolution. Imagine that. Okay? In, he does this only in a few years. You have to teach him ge geography, uh, uh, astronomy, uh, science, the art, uh, languages, God knows what, mathematics. You've got to teach this kid all this. But at the end, and that's why they all choose the school, at the end, who is there to teach these children who they are, their connection with the divine, the purpose God has in store for them, which is written in light through their charts, through their stars. So they don't regenerate. What do they do? They go on Google, they land on science, they don't know better, they turn atheist, or they land on religion, and they might turn a Scientologist or witness of Jehovah, God knows what. They fell in the trap. And at the end, what do they do? They don't regenerate, they get a machine gun, they go and kill everybody in our college university, and then they kill themselves. And instantly, they will always do this in a college or in a school, because this is exactly where it's missing, where the divine information that I represent and want to teach out there are missing. So these kids do not regenerate. They get infected by the reptilians and they become completely berserk. And that will never, ever stop. Suicide is the suicide plague we have now. We never stop. Depression, confusion, lie, greed, uh, killing, uh, uh, school shooting. We we'll never stop until we bring back God or the cosmic design, Jesus' cosmic ministry, initial ministry back in our college university. Because you know what? Those three kings following the stars, they were no kings. They were astrologers. They knew that Jesus was going to be born with a very specific set of stars and he was going to be the leader of the world. Make sense? I wanted to... Uh, yes, and, and, and I love what you're saying. I just there's a couple things I want to cover about what's going on, Please. and um, so Doctor Lesson, you had three questions. Did you get all of yours answered, or are you done? Are you complete? You there, you there? Sash? Okay. Um, so let me ask you a question. So what is this rule of COVID? Uh, hold on. What is the rule of COVID in in today's dynamics? What what's going to happen with COVID? Is it going to be around forever? Is it going oh, to end oh. like the Spanish flu? Yeah, well, basically, everybody's going to get COVID, and that's, well, in some ways, it is a good thing because you, this is the only way. Um, your vaccine ain't going to work. You know, you can be sure of that. What's what's going on with the vaccine? Who is going to make money? You, me, no. Who's going to make money? The pharmaceutical corporation and the doctors and the insurance company. They are greedy and they don't care what they put in your body. All they want is the green. In fact, um, getting inoculated is the worst thing you can do for yourself. You don't have to ask for it. It's all over. Everybody's going to get it. There is no way to escape this virus because it's virulent. It's the worst of the worst that we have ever experienced. But the doctors are not telling you anything. And Dr. Fauci cannot tell you the truth. It is not part of his... He can only give you hopes, okay? Hopefully, okay. The, hopefully it will it's work. It's going to never go away. It's going to be like... Uh, a lot of we have a lot of things that never go away. You know, no, we have cold. It, it is to stay. So, so the good news is, if you 
if let's say for example um, i hope for yourself out there you know let's say you're healthy you don't smoke you don't drink you don't do pot you're positive you exercise you eat properly that's all you need to do get your supplement your vitamin <coughs> you build your immune system instead of poisoning your body purposely that's stupid do not do this just I don't understand why they don't talk about natural healing and boosting your natural immune system because this doesn't bring any money. So all these people are scaring the hell out of you so you run and get inoculated or pay for it. That's, that's my feedback. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Right. Um, and then have you looked at the different vice presidential candidates? If you were... Uh, consulting with Joe Biden, who would you recommend to be his vice president? Well, again, this this is something that I would not dare to do because um, there is a karma, there is a higher order that has been imposed by who's going to be our vice president. Now, on the other hand, if he says, okay, Dr. Terry, I have five or six people, uh, there is there, they talk for us, guide me, to which one will be the best for the United States. That's what I would do. This is what will and will do in the future. People will not elect somebody like Trump because he got a few million dollars. He was able to uh, steal, to lie, to cheat in order to become at the end the president and bully himself in the White House being helped by the Russians. This will never happen in the future. People in the future will have enough cosmic consciousness to realize that the president that you have put in power, uh, stars are going to reflect on you. You know, it's pretty much, again, as I said earlier, if the father of a family is a Mormon or a witness of Jehovah, <coughs> excuse me, chances are the entire family will become what the father is. And President Trump somewhere, somehow, is like being the president, uh, of the, the father of all the family, that are under him. Do I make sense? Right. Yes. So, <laughs> excuse you me. We again. We're going to learn our lesson and never do this again. Oh, no. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I need to get a glass of water. Okay. Go for it. Uh, Deborah, are you back? Deborah, you come back. Sasha, I am back. There. I am back, but I'm on the phone with the bank, so I can only I can only chat for a minute. <laughs> I just thought that if you had a question, um, not yet. Can I just tell you this is so fascinating? Like I love the way he's breaking it down and making people understand. You know, I love the idea about the cosmic laws that we don't understand yet. Okay, well, just if you can, you can't talk, just put something in the chat and we can ask Dr. Turi for you. Okay, we'll do. Back from... Okay, and Dr. Lesson, are you there? <clears throat> Sasha, where are you? Sasha, <laughs> you're talking, we can't hear you. Okay, I'm, I'm back. In here. I'm back, huh? Okay, so sorry Dr. about that. <clears throat> That's yeah, I've okay. been doing. I've been doing. Um, too, I've been doing too many radio show lately, and I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> well, that's okay. That I'm back. happens. That yep. Happens. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we may have lost Doctor Lesson. I'll put my head in there. But uh, okay. So, uh, okay. So we were talking about uh, the VP candidates, and uh, oh, I know what my question was. You said that everybody has a dragon. That's correct. I've heard you talk about the dragon. Can you explain to our listeners what the dragon is in astrology? What, what does that mean? The head of the dragon represents your future, and that's as a Jupiterian aspect, which means if you follow the head of the dragon, God and the devil, per se, will become your friend to get you where you want to go. The dragon still is a residue of your past life. That's where you're stuck. And that's where you've been uh, um, doing for many, many past life. And then you reincarnate to get off this tail and ride the head of the dragon and being successful. In the term of President Trump, <clears throat> for example, he's got a tail in Sagittarius. 
So he is the bull in the china shop. He is uh, blunt. He is uh, uh, unrefined. He's not sophisticated. He's not educated. Uh, he has to move towards the head in Gemini and understand the importance of uh, delegating others in improving his communication skills in uh, all sorts of things that he's not, any, everything that he has not. And because he's not exactly smart, he can be manipulated by the Russians. And that's what's going on. Do that make sense? It's scary. But that's how it is. I'm back again to get Dr. Lesson. <laughs> uh, his mic's not working. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, go ahead, Did you, Josh. What's your question? Did you get all your questions answered? I was talking uh, to you. Well, there, I just, it was just a, a small thing that it's not just a religions uh, that uh, indoctrinate or a science uh, as, as a kind of religion, but it's also nations. People regard nations as though they're religions almost. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You make sense. Uh, the tale of the dragon in Sagittarius has put America in a box. And then uh, this tale of the dragon makes our president very unlucky with foreigners and foreign land. I mean, to become friends or communicate in secret with our worst enemy, uh, simply point out uh, and enunciate that I am right. This is dangerous for this country. And to remove all this soldier from the German border, it's like giving a present to Mr. Putin, who may decide to invade some country in Europe. He's waking up NATO. America uh, <clears throat> is being run by somebody who has absolutely no idea of, and he, he doesn't have anything at all in, in running such a powerful, big country that we call the United States. He's 150% unfit as a president. He is a businessman and he runs this country like a business where greed, cheating, lying is running the show. The point is, this is not a reality show. This is America. And this is millions of people who have put him in power now paying the price for being stupid. There you go. And of course, a lot of people are going to disagree with me because they vibrate like our president. No, 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 no. It's they, they, they're going to find every excuse in the world to hate me because they cannot enter the intuitional domain of my work. And they, they can only delegate with me and my cosmic wisdom using their five logical, limited human senses. They lack that spiritual values that will help them to grow spiritually. Well, you see the result in the future. You see who is right. Can you say something about Boris? Uh, and, uh, and is he very much like Trump? Because he, it Boris, seems like the English have been invaded by <laughs> Putin as well. Well, uh, I wrote about this person. <clears throat> but uh, he, uh, Boris he was born with the tail of the dragon in Capricorn. And... Uh, Again, the British have put someone in power that has the tail of the dragon of their own country. Uh, England is a Capricorn country. Hitler was born with the tail of the dragon in Capricorn. Let's say Hitler had me as an astrologer. Right now, everybody would be speaking German. Because I would have said to Hitler, Hitler, your tail of the dragon is in Capricorn. England is a Capricorn country. Stop everything around Europe, around Russia, concentrate and focus in England because that is where the end of the Reich will come from. This is what exactly I would have said to Hitler. And then Hitler would have followed me, he would have neutralized uh, England and he would have won the war. But luckily for me and for the world, I was not there. And all these astrologers practice modern astrology. They don't practice Nostradamus astrology. They don't know nothing about a dragon. And that's what saved the world. So, in reference to Boris, he has the tail of the dragon in Capricorn. He ain't going to do no good for this country. And he escape, he escape coronavirus because he is who he is with a lot of money. And they caught him early and they save his butt. And if it was you or me, we'd be dead. Because we don't have the money. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's a good, if we could go back a few steps to 
Uh, Brexit, which seems to me to be a terrible disaster for protection against uh, Putin. Uh, and, and, and Mr. Cameron really thought that England would choose to uh, remain. Do you have any a reflection on that situation? All I can tell you is uh, the reptilians are putting people in power that have no business in power. They are opening the doors to the worst of the worst leader in the history of humanity to fulfill their agenda, to create chaos, to create fear, to create uh, humongous, humongous trouble. So this very precious, rare piece of real estate we call Earth becomes their possession. And that will never really happen because the Draconians are, are fighting nonstop against this group of extraterrestrials. But that's why these people are in power. And this is why... Uh, all the secrets of the universe are kept uh, under the blanket um, by uh, the Vatican because knowledge is power and ignorance is evil. The less you know, the better these people can control you. And the more there is chaos, the more there is pain, the less you worry about them or what they are doing. Do I make sense? Yes. And God, thanks for that. We have people so like you that are opening doors. Uh -huh. So the highest level, who's really pulling all these strings? You're saying it's a, the, the draconians or no? It's it, it, it's it's all extraterrestrials. You know, um, as I've explained in my movie, <clears throat> extraterrestrials are part of your psyche. They are part of your uh, uh, cosmic makeup, so to speak. Uh, you have two eyes, two arms, two legs. Uh, you have a reptile brain and you have a draconis brain. The reptilians um, stimulate the mind of people, and especially scientists, to create nukes, to weaponize the weather, to create viruses, to destroy, because they can only survive in dark matter, with pain, with suffering, with negativity. Uh, they are co you can call them Satan, for, uh, Satan or the devil, for a lack of word, in, in the, the religious scheme of things. Uh, the other, the other parts are the draconis, the, the messengers, uh, 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 the messengers, so to speak, or the gardeners of this world. Uh, those entities stimulate the mind of a scientist to create uh, um, beautiful technology to fix your eyes or your heart, to stimulate the mind of a, a musician to create a beautiful piece of music, or to write a beautiful book, to help and to heal. Constantly in battle between the good and the bad on a daily basis. And those ETs are already in your head. Now, it doesn't mean, of course, that they will not interact physically because this is what they did with me uh, seven times so far. Because I'm a magnet to these things. And uh, uh, in fact, let, let me, before I forget, let, let me just tell you my latest uh, abduction. It's a few weeks ago. Yeah. I, work for, I work for FedEx. I have the side because I have so many student uh, doctors and nurses in New York uh, and because uh, I have the qualification and nobody wants to go there and bring uh, COVID-19 in their home, um, they, they, they have a lot of problems finding drivers who wants to go to New York. <clears throat> so I sign up. I said, okay, I'm going to go there so I can help all my people that need me and at the same time uh, make good money because he pays a lot of money. So they said to me, Louis, you're going to go and deliver two trailers um, to Las Vegas. So I went there. Everything went fine. And then I came back. And then the, the, next, uh, the next morning they said to me, well, Louis, you have to go back. We have another load, but a bigger load. Uh, All together, my truck and my two trailer weighed about 80,000 pounds. That's big. So uh, I was driving on uh, Highway 93. Uh, going um, going east, and um, as I was driving on the highway, up a sudden, uh, the two the two lane highway uh, uh, turned like a Y. Uh, oh my God! I was going so fast. I was going full speed, 65 miles per hour. The tracks are limited at 65, but it was 80,000 pounds. It's pretty fast. So I got shocked. I said, Oh my gosh, that wasn't there last night. What the hell is this? I was going so fast that I took the right side and I did everything I could not to flip the trailers. And then I was in shock. I was thinking, My gosh, what was this? Did they work here last night? I mean, how possible? And then, next thing I know, guess what? I am on a different highway, miles ahead on I 40 West. 
And I never ever drove on the overpass like I did the night before. I was so confused. I said, how is this possible? Me and 80,000 pounds of equipment. On, I was on one highway and then a second later I'm on a different highway. How is this possible? So I delivered my stuff and I thought, okay, I'm going to be driving back around 10, 10.30 in the morning. I am going to really, really look really hard to see if they did something during the night uh, or the day before because everything was, everything was fine the, the, the night before, the day before. I drove back to the same area. Guess what? Nothing has changed. The only way to go from 93 to 40 is to take this big, long, half a mile long overpass. It wasn't there. Okay, now listen to this. <clears throat> the next day, I was very so confused. I asked my boss, I said, please look on the GPS, look at the camera because I slam on the brakes. So you, you naturally uh, uh, activate the camera for insurance and security purpose. They're looking in and out. My boss looked at everything and he says, Louis, you are there. But from 2.30 to 3 o'clock in the morning when this happened, there's nothing on the tape. And there's nothing that's changed on the GPS. The very next day, <clears throat> uh, when they sent me somewhere else, I was driving on High 51, okay? And I'm supposed to take another overpass to go on 10, okay? Exactly the same thing. I find myself at 35th Avenue, seven miles ahead. And I just jumped on 51. How the hell could I go from entering the highway to pass 35th Avenue seven miles ahead in a fraction of a second. They did this in two consecutive days. That is my two last UFO abduction, Janet. It is pretty scary. And then, when you think it's all that... What's to you? Yeah, when you think it's all... It's crazy. It's just crazy. Then the next day, my wife went to see her friend, and then she came back and she said, honey, it was about 11 o'clock at night. I'm going to wash my car. I said, okay, wash your car, and I'm watching you on the security video that I have, making sure that nothing happened to her on the driveway. And then there is uh, one dog that came in, and she ran inside of the house. She said, oh, my, there's a dog. There is a dog here. I'm afraid. It, it was a mid-sized dog. So I went outside. I talked to the dog. He was very friendly. I said, don't you worry. And he sat next to her car. I said, keep, keep washing. Maybe his boss is around, he's walking around, he's going to pick him up. Don't worry about it. And I went back inside. And then another little dog came in. Very, very small little dog. She came back again in the house and says, honey, I need another dog. Okay, so I said, no problem. Okay, I'm going to look for their bosses. So keep washing your car. So I start to walk and those two little dogs follow me. I, I went all around the block looking for whomever taking these dogs out. They, go, they were lost. Nobody was there. So I went back in the house. Those two dogs were following me. I said to my wife, look, I don't want to risk these dogs' life. We're going to put them in the back of the house. We're going to put a blanket. We're going to give water and food. And tomorrow morning, um, we're going to, I'm going to look around, see if there is any sign that says lost dog or whatever it is. But guess what? The next morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, I went outside. I opened the door. Those two dogs were gone. So I look everywhere, and I have a six feet tall wall, and I have electric uh, wire on, the, on, on top of my walls. It's impossible for anybody to come into, in the back of this house, and including my camera. So my wife went to bed at 5 o'clock in the morning, and she saw the dogs before she went to bed. So it happened between 5 and 9. So I look at my videos. Nothing at all. And my little dog, she can hear a car. She can hear people uh, on the other side of the street. She always wakes me up. My little dog slept all night, and she never heard anything. Those two dogs completely were lateralized from the back of my house. And to these days, my wife and I were still wondering what the hell again happened. So I'm telling you, things happened to me because... Like it would happen to you when you vibrate in a very, very weird uh, uranic energy. If you have a lot of Aquarius in your chart, you're going to attract the unbelievable, the mind-boggling, the impossible, all the divine. But for sure, you're going to attract UFOs experiences. And, and, and because I have a stellium in the world of Aquarius, uh, you know, magnet will attract a piece of wood. I attract all those things. Just wanted right. to share that with you. So... Uh 
what do you think happened? Have you recovered any memory of what happened when you had that missing time? Nope. Either of those <clears throat> nope. I had, I, it's just like, I mean, you're talking about when I was driving the truck and being thrown on a different highway? Yes. <clears throat> no, I didn't. Yes. No, because I was conscious all along. I was conscious. I was, it's not like I need to, not like other experience when I went inside of the flying saucer, when they took the fetus of my wife, when they did all that. No, this is all in the movie explained in great detail. No, I was fully conscious. I was, and again, remember, I'm driving an 80,000 pound truck with two trailer. Right? You uh, cannot yeah. space yeah. out. You die. The same when the next day when I was driving my car on the highway and find myself seven miles on the other side. I mean, <clears throat> I was conscious. There is nothing, there is no way for me to recoup any, any memory because I was conscious. So that tells you what, what they're able to do. They, uh, I mean, they, they picked me up in the middle of Los Angeles, so you don't have to go in the middle of the desert. But when this happened, it was over 2, 2.30 in the morning, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert, just before I-40. So this is a very remote area. I was listening to George Norrie repeat, <clears throat> and uh, they were talking about uh, abductee and contactee. And I was thinking to myself, just before this happened, I was thinking, with all this incredible, mind-boggling experience I went through in my life, you know, uh, I, I wish I knew the, the reason to why all this happened to me. And bang, there you go. In one second, I'm on a different highway with the truck. There you go. Well, Sash wants to say something. Well, Go just uh, in, in existentialism, we'd say the in, the intention is just is uh, manifesting what you got. They wanted, you said, to show you what they could do. That was their exactly intention. Exactly what my wife says. They they want to show me what they can do, and they also want to keep in touch with me, letting me know that there is something much bigger ahead of me. That's exactly how it is. They are, they are forcing me to realize they are real. I already know they are real. I've seen them. I've talked to them. But they, they, they have something ahead for me that uh, they don't want me to freak out. And I don't think I will freak out. Sometimes I say in the middle of the night, okay, I'm ready now. See what I'm saying? I'm calling them. And then I feel, I feel this energy. I feel that this, oh my gosh, is coming, is coming. And then I kind of... Uh, uh, am I ready or not? Am I ready or not? See? So, it, it, in my heart, I am. But maybe my senses are not. I mean, it, it, you're Poseidon in the middle of the night. You, you, you know, you see something in the middle of the highway, a little E.T. say, hey, stop, stop, something like this. I'm just giving you an ID. Uh, you're going to freak out. You know what I'm saying? You're going to freak out. Yeah. And then, especially when you drive a truck, they, they, they want to make sure that you're safe. They cannot put you in conscious or take you out when you have 80,000 pounds of equipment in your, in your hands. So I understand what they did this time. Wow. It, well, just they, they are giant. treading us to be okay with them, um, you know, just popping in. So if you're learning something, uh, they could leak you in and out of time. So you might have missing time. You may not have missing time. But you nope. definitely uh, went through some kind of time chase phase shift <laughs> and yeah. um you know but the you know they trained me that they can come they can pop in my living room and i'm okay and it's happened a couple of times but we'll talk about we're coming up on the break we have like two minutes do you have another question slash okay so we do want to go into your experiences um so we'll cover that after the break yeah, I, i'm particularly interested in uh, conversations with uh, people that have already passed and the wisdom that they have and the continuing contact yes and i know that course. you've got a lot of yeah and, yeah okay, and i, I got to get that yeah the people who have passed and deb what's on your wish list for the second app i see um, you typing deb go ahead <laughs> well i want to know from Dr. Turi, why he thinks the ET contact is occurring, right? What's their end game? I ask this of every contactee, right? What Beautiful. do you think the What do you think the end game is? I can answer that. All right. <clears throat> um, they are preparing me. I feel from the bottom of my heart, it is not normal. Absolutely not normal. From the age of six years old to have had seven 
seven encounters. This doesn't include what happened with those two dogs who literally disappeared from the back of my house. This is not a UFO thing. My wife says these dogs were not dogs. But anyway, that's, that's what I can tell you as far as this is concerned. They well, are preparing. Was there any, was there any dog poop? <laughs> nope. <laughs> they, they are, they are preparing me. They, psychologically speaking, they have been with me since I'm a child. And each time they've been talking or abducting me uh, for a very specific purpose, they, they, they are doing something that is leading to the ultimate contact. That's what I know. My, I might disappear. I mean, I, you, you might, I might, this might be my last show with you. They might just pick me and take me away and they disappear. Millions of people disappear. You know that. When, but when you that say was the ultimate key, contact, Dr. Turi, do you mean letting themselves be openly known to the world? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The, the, you know, as we are moving into the age of Aquarius, we are increasing our vibrations. And since the future is the reincarnation of the thought, the more people get uh, used to ETs, the more they talk about it, the more they acknowledge and accept the reality, we are going to be able to create this reality. So they're going to be able in time and space to vibrate at our speed. Right now they vibrate too high to become real. They are... Yes. Uh, we have we have a flying saucer here. We have a new story here. Whatever I have to tell you, but this this is not totally hundred percent physical. We it's, it's in the melting process. Dr. Terry, the music's starting. We need to go to break. You got it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! The future is uncertain, I know this. Death is inevitable, I know this. But one thing is certain, as free men, it is our right to live unencumbered and in peace. And those times are quickly drawing to an end. And in these times, peace is certainly an illusion. And as the chains grow tighter, our ability to slip those chains increase incrementally with every passing moment. In action is no longer an option. It's time to raise our voices like a cacophony of thunder and lightning, and tell the masters, no more. And this is Nighthawk, and I say, for myself, no more. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, because the freedom is slipping away. Hello, my name is Mr. Rowe. I am the host of Reality Extraction. Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. I utilize logic, intellect, and magic to methodically atomize, vivisect, analyze, examine, study, scrutinize, and extract an essence of reality from a fog of illusion and confusion. You can find me on Studio B every Thursday, 1700 hours Pacific Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. No topic taboo, no subject too strange. I strive to take a neutral standpoint during the dissection of the topic. Topic at hand, that's Reality Extraction with Mr. Rowe on Revolution Radio. When 
a narco-syndicalist commune. We take it in turns to act as a sort of executive officer for the week. Yes. But all the decisions of that officer have to be ratified at a special bi-weekly meeting. Yes, I see. By a civil majority in the case of purely internal affairs. Be quiet. But by a two-thirds majority in the case of more Be quiet. I order you to be quiet. Look, you stupid bastard. You've got no arms left. Yes, I have. Look. It's just a flesh wound. I don't believe I'm seeing such a display of courage, skill, nerve, grace, and stupidity. I'll do you for that. Oh, what? Come here. What are you going to do? Bleed on me? I'm invincible. You're a loony. The Black Knight always triumphs. Roundtable Live, Monday through Friday, 1 a.m. till 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Bring your mind, bring your ideas, bring your voice. King Arthur had nothing on us. Here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. things were not quite right, that everything was just ever so slightly askew. Do you have, to paraphrase Morpheus, a splinter in your mind? If you're interested in hearing the latest information about UFOs, the paranormal, ancient cultures and structures, monatomic elements, longevity, fantastic discoveries in science, download it to your brain, then tune in to us. Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Mackie. And we are Shiny Side Out, Sundays, 2 to 4 a.m. Eastern. See you then. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Alright, thanks for listening while we take that short break here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. And yeah, we're going to get back to your host. Janet, are you on mute? And we're back, everyone. Yes, the girl's <laughs> on mute. I keep forgetting. <laughs> I, you know, the old the old system was they just um, I don't know. He dropped in and re yeah, but that's okay. We're doing it this way. I just have to get used to it. So anyway, we're back. This is Stargate to Cosmos with Janet Care Lesson and Dr. Sasha Alex Lesson. And our producer is Deborah DeFranco, and we are on Revolution Radio Studio B. And we're listening to Dr. Lewis Torrey, and we are about to get back to the show, but we have to remember, remind everybody to go up to revolution.radio, the website, and click on at the top left hand, there's a tab for your one-time donation, and in the center at the top, there is a button for your recurring donation. So we want to thank you very much for donating (laughs) because it helps us keep these shows on the air and we really appreciate you supporting us. So, um, okay, Dr. Lesson, what would you like to say before we bring back Dr. Turing? Well, uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to this half of the show because uh, Dr. Turing says he's going to tell us about uh, contact with the departed because that's uh, almost everybody, if you really question it, talks to people that have passed over, and uh, there's conversations going on uh, and, and for most people, and I know uh, you know a lot about it, uh, Louis, so I'm eager to hear that. Well, basically, when when somebody comes to see me, sometimes they are very devastated. All of a sudden, their closest family member, a mother, a father, a grandma, a grandpa, uh, a wife, or even a dog or a cat, People cry, raver when they lose a pet or when they lose a, a person. The, you know, you, you're going through so many different emotions uh, because of a sudden that person that has been part of your life is gone. So you're desperate. And, and at the same time, you become very vulnerable to all the clowns out there who don't have any cosmic consciousness and, and make up stories. So the good news about... Um, Delegating with the superconscious is that I ask this person, when is, for example, your mother, if you lost your mother, okay, when was your, do you have your date of, the date of birth of your mother? 
And as soon as that person gave me the date of birth of, of her mother, I know immediately how to reach the subconscious uh, of that person through the superconscious in time and space. So anybody can do that you know, if you train, of course. Uh, there is people who are doing this naturally. Uh, those who are born with a very powerful Pisces dragon's head, for example, like Nostradamus and Gar Casey, Madame Vladaski, they can enter the, this high plane in a fraction of a second. But with training, uh, you, you know that you're delegating with the departed soul and not an entity like the reptilius who wants to mess around with your head. So, all I do is, I've never seen that mother of that person. I don't know who she is. And I start to talk and say things on how she was, how she uh, presented herself, how she communicated, what, is, what it was that the way she was with uh, a daughter or a father or a son. I, I kind of jump into that person at the subconscious level and I take on that entire personality and I talk. And sometimes I come up with things that even myself, say, how the hell do I do this? And then as soon as the permission is done, the, the session is over, I disconnect. And then I literally forget everything about what I said. Yeah, Because it's not me. It's, it's Draco that takes over. He's already there. I shall already this guy. So he's opening different doors. Um, they don't, have, have you ever recorded it? Does it does, uh, Louis, have no, you no, ever because recorded it. Do you sound like you, oh, no, you no, sound I, different? Every one of my uh, session have to be recorded. Would it be mm -hmm. on Zoom, mm -hmm. on on Skype? It has to be recorded because I don't know what I'm talking about. Literally, I do not know once I'm done. It's not me. I'm just picking up this information and talk about that person's life and how she misses that person and, and explain um, uh, rationally where she's at or where he's at. You know, uh, there, is, there is millions of levels of consciousness, not this, just this one. It's like if you get the knob of a radio station and you turn it right, it's going to go into the future forever, and you turn it left and it goes into the past forever. See, and then we're in between. We're in a different sphere. So it's like a tune in to in the past or into the future. Because I can also go into the future when I make predictions. Like, like I'm going to give you four dates and I'm going to give you some uh, uh, predictions to what's going to happen. I can turn that knob into the future. But right now, I'm conscious. I'm here. But when I delegate with a departed soul, um, I, I turn it left. And it's the same with pets. In fact, I wrote, uh, I wrote a, uh, and you can Google it, you can Google uh, cats and dogs in time and space. It explains why cats and dogs uh, live with humans. I can give you a little, a little info as far as dogs are concerned. Once upon a time, uh, the dogs were in a human form. And then they, um, like we are about to do, they have lost respect they have forgotten what it means to love. And then when they finally uh, eliminate themselves okay, and disappear from the, the physical world they were in, uh, when they get back home to God, so to speak, they had an option. It's either they come back for 24 years of uh, uh, evolution or they decide to help a race which is in progress. So the, the dog God, so to speak, um, decide to um, help uh, us. So the dog god says, okay, uh, you, you are going to sound exactly like when you were fighting. This is why dogs bark. They don't talk. They bark. And then they said, your punition is that regardless how much a human being is going to mistreat you, you will always come back and always love him because that is your lesson. You have messed up the lesson of love and respect. So now you're going to have your karma and you're going to come back as a dog. So that is uh, to explain to you on an, an a karmic way why dogs are living with us. And so cats are different. But anyway, you can read all, all that I channeled through Draco's writing uh, about uh, why cats and dogs live with us. But um, sometimes it's painful. Are there, are, are there any 
visiting one of our parents that are of, of anybody here, you know, uh, me and Sasha and Endeavor, anybody of our, any of our, one of our parents wanting to talk to us? Are you picking up anybody here? Well, normally this type of session are kind of private because I might come up with things that will be uh, very, very hard to hear uh, because that is the person talking to his child. And uh, sometimes they kind of uh, don't want to talk. They, they want to be more of a private session. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there is, there is some certain rules that apply when you delegate the metaphysical plane. And uh, there is uh, uh, some privacy that must be respected. And in that now, there are people who are doing this just not knowing better. And that's where they attract the lowest entities that pretend to be that person. And they give wrong information. So you have to be cautious when you delegate this uh, uh, this world. Do I make sense What about again? the four predictions? Yes, you make sense. So we'll keep it private. What about the four predictions you're going to give us? All right. So I'm going to ask you and your audience to get a pen, okay? And I'm going to nod into the future now. I'm going to give you uh, August 10th, okay? August uh, the 16th, August the 23rd, and the 29th. Okay, 10, 16, 23rd, 29, because we are at the beginning of the month. So I'm going to give you those dates. Okay, and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen on the 10th. Okay, that's the, the first one coming in a, in a few days from now. This is a plutonic energy. Plutonic energy means anything to do with secrets, wake up call, the police, Russia, death, terrorism, uh, is the, the key words for these dates. A lot of people during those days um, will make it. This is where you're going to have a crazy husband to kill his wife, a cop that is going to kill somebody. In fact, um, what happened uh, with uh, George, uh, uh, what is his name again? Uh, uh, Floyd. Yeah, George Floyd happened during a plutonic window. And whatever you do, whatever you say, doing this type of cosmic winds will stay with you for the rest of your life and will change your life. So this energy is coming back on the 10th. So be careful what you say, what you do during those days because you're going to get a wake-up call and you're going to see the horror of what humans can do to each other because the reptilians are going to be leading the dance, uh, the mad dance of evil on the 10th and also, let's see, on the 10th and the 23rd, let me put it this way. The 10th of August and the 23rd of August, you're going to have those two very, very tough, negative, deadly windows. You got that? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, on the 16th and the 29th, on the 16th, expect the beginning or the end of important phases of life. This is when I lost my mother. She ended her life during one of these windows. This is also where uh, David Icke uh, was stuck in an airport uh, in uh, Los Angeles and was refused a visa to go to uh, Australia. So it was the end uh, of him going to speak over there. And uh, that, I'm sure you remember that story with David Icke. Yes? Yes. Yeah. All right. So it will affect you on a personal level. This means also that uh, would it be a natural disaster or earthquakes? Uh, thousands of people will be forced to relocate. It's like a really nasty natural disaster, a hurricane, a tornado, a volcano, God knows what, or a squid, that, that will force people, uh, like it's going on right now in LA, where people are forced to relocate because of a fire. Uh, and in part of my prediction, when I made my prediction um, uh, in uh, August last year, I said it's going to be a, a year of wind and fire. And I also predicted the COVID-19, of course, on coast to coast. Now, uh, the 29 is pretty much uh, uh, a time for earthquake explosion, uh, news about the cosmos and UFOs, uh, technology, cyber welfare. Um, but most of all, the energy could be so bad it could produce a tsunami. So I hope that's not going to be in Hawaii. 
<laughs> but I'm giving you this date of 29. This is going to be the sudden release of energy, shocking energy. Uh, if you are into UFOs, that's the time to get your camera and go and look for them. On the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st. No, the, no, the month goes only to 30. No, 31st, yes. So it's three days. Uh, the, uh, the draconis will be uh, very, very obvious. And you'll be safe to get and look for them. All right, so now this is what I have. You can, you know, uh, I give you the keywords because I want to be objective, okay? And then you're going to see when those uh, four dates, and I, I, I am also going to write a newsletter where I'm going to have your show, your link for your show. And I'm going to get those four dates, and I'm going to uh, elaborate a little bit more. So I'm going to put it on, of course, it's going to be on my newsletters on my website, drturi.com. So uh, you will see, I'm going to keep an eye on those dates and I'm going to refresh your memory because uh, sad enough people have short memory. But I always uh, crystallize my work and put it in a newsletter so there is no denying my, my words, my predictions. Excellent. And since we're still going towards the future, what's going to happen in 2021? <sighs> that is what something... I, you know, I'm going to, I'm about to write the 2021 prediction, or so I'm Dragon predictions. <clears throat> and, um, and, you know, I wish I had better news, but you're talking about the tail of the dragon moving into the most deadliest sign of the Zodiac, Scorpio. Scorpio rules Russia. Scorpio rules life and death. And reincarnation, this is why the USSR uh, is not more that you know, Russia died and Russia is born again. So because of that energy, Scorpio rules the FBI, the CIA, the KGB, investigation, uh, stealing information, power. The Scorpio rules the criminal element. So this is the golden gate or the golden carpet, the red carpet for the reptilians. Those two years, 2021, 22, oh my God, America has to die in rebirth. I mentioned that earlier. So if you prepare, you don't freak out, because the dragon works both ways. It works both positively and negatively, but if you do not know in what house, in what area this dragon is enforcing your, hypothetically speaking, death and rebirth, then you are going to suffer hell. But if you know about it, you are prepared. And being prepared is being much stronger to delegate whatever drama is coming to us. So again, it could be a natural disaster outside of proportion that we never have experienced. It certainly will involve the reality of extraterrestrials within three, four years. They will become a reality, accepted universal reality. Maybe it'll be for something, I don't know, but I'm telling you what I see, right? Um, the head will be in Taurus. Taurus was the banking industry to represent money, the ancient car of the bubble. This is why the financial district uh, in New York is represented by a big, a big powerful bull and a little girl. The bull, uh, or Taurus, rules uh, Switzerland, where all the banks are located. The head of the dragon is going to be there. So this means a lot of corporations are going to go beat up and being forced to restructure the banking industry. So the dollar is going to go berserk. There's a restructure involving uh, the financial world, large corporation, uh, the police force, everything that's going on with the police, anything that's going on with uh, uh, Alifa, all this was predicted. But again, it, you have to keep an eye on my work and read it for your own eyes. And it's all in the 2020 Nostradamus Dragon forecast. So the idea is to remember, regardless of what the universe karmically is forcing all of us to endure doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It's going to be very, very difficult for people not to be depressive and negative or the chain of suicide ahead is, um, is going to be mind-boggling. Okay, talking about that. If you, this is the tip of the iceberg that we're going now and you can see the hell we're in already. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There is a karmic work that has to be done that is directly touching the United States in relationship to the rest of the world. Now, once President Trump is out of power, 
at least this nasty tale of the dragon in Sagittarius will not be as negative as it is now. Remember, Sagittarius was also the Indians, um, the minority, the black people, which are being cursed by coronavirus more than any other groups, right? And of course, when the tale was in... in when the terror was in Capricorn, Capricorn ruled all the people. This is why all the old people were the first one to go. But now it has changed from all people to everybody, it's particularly people that are uh, Indian, or Latino, black people, and the, the minority. This dragon is aiming for these people. So it also uh, aims for screwing up anything to do with learning, college, university, and religion, and the law. This is why you have bar being going, you know, it's just, it's so obvious if, if you follow my work. But uh, uh, to those who just jumped in and don't know Dr. Thierry, they, I don't know how they're going to think. Maybe uh, they're going uh, to assume that because I'm so confident, I'm an egocentric. People tend to do that. They, they judge my delivery uh, and uh, the way I speak, the way I am, the way I express myself. is so honest, it's so direct, and it's so strong that people that are oversensitive tend to think I'm an egocentric. Nothing to do with um, being an egocentric. All, all there is is that I'm very concerned, and I'm very, very concerned for the welfare of every people out there that are listening to us. I'm not selfish. I give every day. I write every day. I make video, YouTube video. My YouTube video are very entertaining and very educational, and I get tons and tons of support. But you will always have one or two or three thumb down and sixty or seventy thumbs up. You will always see those people who have degenerated. They are so negative. They, their life is uh, depressive. They are repellent. They, they don't have no friends. They have no love. They have no success. And I try to explain to these very people not to be this way, not to misjudge me, to upgrade their vibration by being positive because a magnet will attract a piece of wood. They are going to attract their wishes. They are going to attract the person they need so desperately in their life to, to experience true love like I have with my wife. They are going to attract the, the job or the career and the money they so desperately need. Let me tell you something. Um, once I went to a bar and uh, I was with my Corvette, brand new red Corvette convertible, okay? And I parked this car right there. And when I came out, uh, an hour later, I had cigarette butt light up on my leather seat and had spit on my windshield. Now, Janet, you tell me, how the hell can any of these infected people attract a Corvette when they spit on it? Do I make sense? Right. Yeah. And this is, this is why I wrote a book. It's called Beyond the Secret. It's 600 page, very small font, where I explain the power of the superconscious. As you are, you're going to attract. And this movie about UFO on Amazon Prime is dedicated to our society to educate them on those very negative entity that lives in dark matter, in black matter, because the scientists to this day, they do not know what black matter is. Those entity travel in time and space through black holes. They have hijacked Pluto. Pluto is their base. Pluto is known in astrology to be the lord of Eden, the lord of hell, the negative on the end of the world, criminal, negativity, killing, drama. And then there are children that are born with Pluto in Scorpio. I call them the death wish generation. These are the ones who are uh, throwing bottles, throwing rocks and bricks at the police. All of these nasty kids, this generation already dealt with the police. And they hate when they've been caught, when they had to go to jail or pay for a ticket. They hate the police. So this is a perfect excuse to get their revenge. They can only survive with the reptilians by drama, death, by being in a com constant confusion, by being fighting. They are completely and entirely infected and negative. And some of these people are watching my video, and I guarantee you that, Janet, I can dance on my head. There is no way that I'm going to turn a, uh, a gang leader into a nice person. 
they are already too infected and they need they need this environment of destruction of fire of anger of death this is how they regenerate because nobody was there early enough to explain to them they don't have to support darkness to support evil in Satan and be part of this black and dark matter forever because they have signed up their souls to evil. Is this a group of souls that may have perished in a strange, uh, unusual way in a previous mm-hmm. generation, you know, like well, Hitler they, or something? Yes, yes, they, 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 they are SS, they are evil people that reincarnate to propagate the negativity. Remember, they cannot be life without death. They cannot be day without night. They cannot be a god without a devil. Again, this is why you have two eyes, two arms, two legs, two sides of the brain. Okay? There is a constant battle between the yin and yang, the good and the bad, in you. And there is a constant battle. There is a war above your head with both the reptilians and the draconis. But humans are not aware. They are stuck on this dense physical world. They are stuck with their rent, with their worries, with the COVID-19. They are in, in, in a world where they are in jail. They do not understand what's going on above their head. And this is the end ramification of what's going on above your head. There is a lot of trouble going on. And then if the majority of human beings get to be trained and practice uh, uh, through education, meditation, uh, learn uh, all about the superconscious, understand the forces of good and the forces of light, and we will turn things around. And this is what's next. But before we get into the light, we got to have a test of darkness. You have to remember, a few months ago, everybody was walking around with their nose stuck on their phone. They didn't go and check hands, hug people. They did not communicate physically like they're supposed to do. So now they're getting a good, a good lesson of what it means to be social distancing. It's part of the karma that we now have to litigate. Do you, Excuse me? you see that ever change? Are we going to be able to go back out and, and hug people again, or is that gone forever? No, nothing goes forever. Life is a constant process of change. We adapt. It's like you and I, um, we're part of the same age group. Well, I'm 70 years old, so I might be a little bit older than you. But what I'm trying to tell you is, do you remember when you used to go and take an airplane? You don't have to take your shoes off. You don't have to go through the hell that we had to go through. But since 9-11, our life has changed. We're going through the same thing right now. Hopefully, hopefully, once this president gets out of there and these nasty stars get out and once this dragon moves on and the next dragon, which is even worse, gets away, they're going to be a different dragon that's going to bring love, light and hopes for humanity. There is no end of changes. That, that's the only thing is true is change. So we, we when have to play come. Up and come. When do we get the good dragon, the, the light and love? All dragons are good. All dragons are good, regardless of the mess we are in. You know, okay. we are into the world of Aquarius now. Aquarius wants us to dwell with technology. They want children to use their computer. The old fashioned of going to school is something that, unless unless you get COVID nineteen, you do not know the a great opportunity that is given to you to work from your home instead of driving, getting, risking your life on the highway and working in an office in the middle of New York. The, the age of Aquarius wants you to experience technology, to experience humanitarianism, to make this world smaller, better. But the age of Aquarius also involves astrology, but it's not yet being accepted as a discipline in our college university. But once it becomes that way, it's going to be easier. See, in the old days, you only had, you had the Bible in every drawer, in every hotel. This is how they kept their drunk. This is how they indoctrinated people. Bible was everywhere. Okay? Nowadays, you, you go to a hotel. I don't know how many Bible you're going to see, but you can be sure that every kid has a cell phone. And these kids have access to me, access to my video, access to you and your teachings. Do I make sense? Everything's yes. changing. When does, the, 
When did the Aquarian Age really start? Uh, it, the, the Age of Aquarius started in 1945. This is when um, uh, the first scientist detonates uh, the first nuke in the uh, Nevada des desert, okay? And then uh, you can see that uh, before that, the world was under the world's uh, age of Pisces. 2,000 years we've been through the age of ignorance, fear, death, religion, deception. 2,000 years under that age. We've been under the age of Aquarius for, what, 50, 60 years? And humanity has made more discovery in 50 years than 2,000 years spent in the age of Aquarius. So you can see that the progress is already there. But there is all sorts of things, and atonement, that are preset by the cosmic code that humanity has to go through before you can really blossom into the age of Aquarius, the age of peace, the age of love, the age of cosmic consciousness, the age who involve our space brother. We are moving on that direction, but we are not there yet. But it's, we are already afoot in that direction. This world is getting smaller and smaller every single day. You cannot refuse, negate, or ignore the age of Aquarius, the one world movement, the one world organization, the one world cosmic awareness. You, but there is a lot of work that humanity has to do before then. And the higher order has decided to put President Trump in control so that his thought could create coronavirus and create the mess we are in. There is a purpose to have had this president, including having Hitler. There is a purpose for everything that you may not agree, or that you may not understand. I'm not talking for you personally, Janet, but maybe some of your uh, listeners. Yes. There is reason for everything, and the idea is to uh, always, always, regardless of what is thrown at you, keep that little light. Yes, Dr. Jerry is right. Things are going to get better. We're going to go through hell, maybe, but there is a higher reason that imposed by the cosmic code, by God's cosmic jurisdictions. And at the end, it is only the, the designed to make us better. What we're going through now is a blessing in these guys. Well, we do not know just yet. And so is the next dragon. And that's the way and the attitude you should have instead of getting depressed and depressive and being negative and feeding the reptilians. So what have you learned from your ET contact? Tell us more about when and how and who you talked to and what did you learn from you had well, seven what I, have, what I have learned first is that uh, I am past believing uh, believing in ETs. I'm past that. It, it, it's not a religion to start with. It's something that is very practical, but it's very real, very solid. And all I have learned is that there is an incredible design. The Galactic Federation of Grand Cosmic Order may and has imposed rules that no extraterrestrials will interfere with the human's fear. Okay, the, but they all do. There are specific reasons, specific purpose, specific missions that involve contactees, and I'm one of those. And you're not going to be just abducting and then connect with extraterrestrial. It's a process. That's why I, they started when I was six years old. And then um, seven, seven times I've been delegating this UFO phenomenon. Some were extraordinarily difficult and very painful. But I had to tell go through it. About, uh Tell, that, tell us about your like your first contact. What was going on? Oh, I was, was only six years six, old. What happened? I, uh, I was only six years old. So uh, because I was born at ADHD, uh, I was punished all the time. And then my parents used to send me to the attic. And of course, uh, uh, you know, during those days, uh, the house where I was living has no water, no electricity, no bathroom, big holes in the wall, uh, no no glass in the windows. I was freezing. So the only way I could keep warm in the attic, uh, my little mattress, uh, and I had only a little blanket, was to have a cat. And then we had a butcher next door. He was killing all these pigs and the lambs, and all the blood uh, passing in front of the house were attracting rats that were bigger than our cats. 
So I, I was always looking for a cat before going to bed so I could be warm. And that night there was no cat. So I was really upset because I knew I was going to freeze my bat. And my mom, as I was cleaning me up the stairs to the attic, and she said, make sure to blow your candle, uh, okay? We don't want a fire in the house. Anyway, um, I fell asleep. And in the middle of the night, I felt something touching my foot. And I thought it was a cat. Because it was normal for me to wake up in the morning with a rat next to me. The cat was freezing cold too. So he used to eat in my bed and sleep with me. And he had his dinner for the next day. So that was normal for me. You know, there's no hygiene during those days. Um, so I felt something on my foot. And I thought he was a cat. So I pushed it a couple of times. Come on, come up, come up, come up the bed. Because I didn't want to lose the warmth that I had um, you know, accumulated into my blanket. And then finally, this cat didn't want to move. So I said, oh, shoot, I have to go and get it. So I sat. Oh, my God. When I sat, I saw for the first time, to the eye of a six-year-old, what I saw was small monkeys with big eyes. In 1966, 56, excuse me. I was six years old. 1956, there was no UFOs. In fact, we had no TV. We had no radio in this house. There was nobody to explain to me what was a gray. I had no idea. So, when I saw this three little monkey with big eyes, what do you do? You, you, you hide and you get hot real fast. <laughs> so I hide. <laughs> and then I get a little bit more courageous and I wanted to see if these things were gone. So I, I kind of put up the blanket and one of them came from the bottom of my bed right there, two inches from my eyes. I passed out. I was so frightened. I passed out. So, and in the morning, I was screaming my head off. I was saying, Mama, little monkey with big eyes. My mom, uh, of course, and my dad, they are, oh, you're lying, you're lying. See, uh, we have, we are eight in the family. I'm half French and half Italian. So being separated from my brothers and sisters was really difficult for me. Okay. But, um, they thought I was lying. And then to the point where I was kind of waking up the entire neighborhood because I was punished very often and each time these guys were there. So they thought we have to fix <laughs> Louis' head. And during those days we had no redolene, we had no antidepressant. What we had is electrical shock in the head. So they wanted to electrocute my head because they thought I was going, I was crazy. But luckily for me, my mom refused. She says, no, no, you're not going to do that to my son. And then she, she said, my sanity. So, you know, this, in during those days, as I mentioned in the movie, there was a lot of reports of uh, uh, ET likes. Uh, and they all say monkeys because they were kids. A lot of this uh, uh, abduction taking place to some kids who, like me, became later on, uh, uh, they, were not, they were not going through abduction. They were going through abduction, but there was a very specific purpose because they were to become contactees. And then it's a process. You know, they, they're doing things in your head, in your body. They're doing all sorts of things. And each time they put you back. And then, um, so uh, this happened for years. Each time I was punished. But I knew, I knew that the next day I was going to be fine. I just knew it. I was going to be fine. So, I got used to I got used to So what? You, you, with the, being exposed to the elements, you could have frozen the death. Were they... Oh. Absolutely. Uh, but that was tough. You know, I was in the streets. If I wanted to drink uh, in the winter, I had to go down from the attic and I had to burn some uh, newspaper to I'm frozen the, the, the fountain. We, we, we only had water from the fountain in the street. We had to turn it. But I was too small. So my brother was helping me. He was turning and I was drinking and, in, and then vice versa. But sometimes we had to burn the fountain, burn all the ice. Uh, and it was good in the winter, in the summer though. But, um, and I was looking in the trash for my food. I mean, my dad, uh, that was my stepfather, okay? Uh, I was six years old when he, but before that, uh, my dad died, uh, earlier, so we, my mom could do whatever she could do during those days with so many kids. Uh, and I was in the streets and I was, looking in the trash. I came from hell. I have a book called Beyond the Secret. It, it tells you everything that I went through with all my UFO experience in great detail. It's my best seller. Um, and you, you can all read from drturi.com. And the, the critics in Amazon says, once you open this book, you cannot put it down. So it tells you uh, how, how captivating this book is. And then they decided to make uh, um, uh, this uh, 
little movie on Amazon, but I'm, I'm certain one day, maybe when I pass, uh, this, uh, this book will be turned into a movie. It's just a reality. So what you happened had to me. your entire childhood, you had ongoing contact. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, that movie on Amazon is designed to bring you to all those experiences in great detail. There is pictures. There is uh, all sorts of... Uh, uh, in fact, because it's so successful, the producers uh, and uh, the directors told me, uh, your movie is being translated uh, in Spanish, in French, and in uh, uh, Japanese, including English. So, it's in various languages well, now. It. Yeah. So, so after I, you grew up, did they continue... Uh, contacting you. So they helped you grow up. Otherwise well, you might not be here. Well, ex- exactly. My, when I was um, um, about 20, 22 years old, uh, I already had th- uh, three. Already, I involved three of my experiences. But I was 22 years old and I, I suffered a bad divorce uh, with my first wife after a year of marriage. She decided to go somewhere else. I was really, really hurt. And uh, uh, I decided to go to England. And uh, when I went to England, my, my, my aim was to become a, a, a recording artist. So I worked three jobs. I worked in a restaurant. I worked at a hospital as a training nurse. And I worked at a switchboard operator. And sometime I was working on a mortuary because nobody wanted to do it. And, but he was paying good money. So I was doing it because I had to pay for my schooling. I was at the Royal School of Music. I, I, I learned how to play piano there. Uh, so basically, um, going, my aim was to become a recording artist. I finally got a recording deal with uh, a Philips phonogram in Paris. During those days, we had no CD. We had pressed black disc. And then my record was selling everywhere. I was happy. I was on my way to become a singer. I played piano, I played guitar, I sang, I made song. I was published. So I was, we sold 50,000 copies of my first record. I was on top of the world. And then uh, things turned in a different way. I, because I was in England, I thought, if I want to do it in a big way, maybe I should go to America. And in the future of being the reincarnation of the thought, I met this guy. Um, in, a, in a bar, in a discotheque in London, and I said, you know what, I never seen a, I never seen a dollar, can you show me a dollar? He said, I don't have a dollar, but I have a quarter. And I still have it, can you believe that? And he, he showed me that, and he says, yeah, here is my business card. And he says, if you ever want to go to America, you know, come and see me. Oh my God. I said, yes, my dream is coming true. I'm going to go, and I'm going to be doing my music in America. That was my plan. So, I worked really, really, really hard for three months. I've managed to save one, one plane ticket. One way. I mean, I had two ways, but I, I knew I was not coming back. And uh, I, arrived in, um, in, I arrived in San Diego. I uh, asked uh, the Greyhound guy to drop me as close as possible to this address. I had the business card. And they dropped me in Mission Boulevard. And there I was with my big bag and my suitcase walking uh, along the, the, the sides looking for that John was supposed to be. So I arrived at this place and there was two old guys there. And I said, excuse me, uh, can I speak to John? And they look at each other and they said, John who? I said, I don't know, is this the right address? They look at it and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been here for 35 years. We sell t-shirts, we sell, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff to go swimming. But we don't know, John. I said, okay, all right, we remember. That's in 19, 1984. No cell phone. So I said to them, can you please call this number? So, of course, they called the number. The number was not listed. Okay, I've been on TV I've been on radio, I've been on George, Norrie, millions of people listening to me. I'm still looking for John. John never existed. <laughs> so I was forced, stimulated to, to leave France, because what happened with my first wife, then meet John in England, give me his car to go to America, come to America, John is not here. And this is how I end up in America. <laughs> and it, it's crazy. Then I had my, you know, I, and then I was so desperate. I said, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I only have 50 bucks in my pocket. 
So I said, right. well, what am I going to do? What am I, I was freaking out. So I walked a little bit to um, uh, a motel and I spent my first night and spent like $30. And the next day, uh-huh. under the bed, I saw a newspaper, La Jolla Light. I didn't know I was going to make La Jolla Light top line years later. <laughs> I didn't know that I had city that would pay me to do the astrological chart. I had no idea yet. I was just harmless again. So I, um, I uh, uh, look at the, the telephone number. They were looking for a roommate there. So I called the lady and she said, yeah, you know, it's next door. Come, come. So I uh, got the address again. But you know what? I didn't know the bus system. And I didn't want to spend my only $20, so I walk. I walk from Mission Boulevard all the way to La Jolla. So I left around 9 o'clock in the morning. I arrived around 4.30 in the afternoon. I walk all day, and it was hot with my bag. I mean, next door in America is like a few miles away, you know. <laughs> I had no idea. So I arrived. Okay. This lady opened the door, and she sees this French guy with a suitcase in the back. She said, oh, my gosh, you're fast. You want to move in already? So I explained my situation. And she said, oh, what wow, perfect. She says, okay, you know what? My daughter is learning French and she's late. So I'll tell you what, you can stay in my couch until you find a place to stay or a job, whatever it is. And, and, and you teach my daughter so she can catch up with the French. There you go. So she was there. Wow. And then the very, se- the very, yeah, but I know the stars already. I knew about the stars a little bit, when to do things, when to go, respecting ever so laws of the moon. I knew a few things. I knew I was going to make it. And then the very same day, I walk around and, and I land on the French gourmet. And this guy is still a friend of mine for, for 40 years. I walk in this place. I spoke to him in French. I said, look, I need, I need to work. He said, no problem, no problem. He gave me my first job. Of course, I was working without a green card. That was, that's how I started. It is crazy. And then from then, uh, I went to L.A. with my master tape, uh, my musical recording. And the guy in L.A., uh, he, they said, oh, my gosh, that's beautiful music. We're going to bring you a musician from England, and we're going to re-record this in a sophisticated uh, 24-track studio, uh, and this and that. So I came out of there, and I had the decision to make. Okay. And I felt inside of me, I don't know why. And those guys in, in England, if they knew that I turned these people down, they would kill me. I turned them down. I said, no, I don't think I'm going to do this. I think I'm done with music. You know, I, I don't know where it came from. I had the strength um, to, to say no. I thought for a second, this type of life means I'm going to be singing when I don't feel like. Maybe I have to drink or take drugs to be able to sing, to sleep, like Michael Jackson did. So I knew that it was not a good choice for me to aim towards such a popularity and becoming famous and becoming a singing machine and making other people millionaire by becoming their slave. So I had enough common sense to say no. When I had it all cooked in my hand, I said no. EMI, I remember, EMI studio in Los Angeles, they told me, my gosh, do you realize what you're doing? People are, would die to have a recording deal with us. And you say no. I said, no, thank you, goodbye. And I left. And I said, I have my master tape rotting in my washing room over there. <laughs> my, my, mission, my mission was to bring a light from darkness, and not to sing and dance like I did for years when I was in England and in France. That was just a, a change of, of, of life when I came to this country. My entire attitude changed. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just destiny. It's written in light. The ETs wanted me, they lure me in this country for a very big, specific purpose. You're talking about the most religious country, most conservative country in the planet. I could be in France and in England and, and, and have an incredible success because, you know, French or European are much more advanced than American. American are all religious poisons. Uh, they've been indoctrinated for years. Uh, I mean, America was built upon puritanical principles. It's all religious. Okay, so I have, I have been led by the draconis into this country, maybe to help Americans to grow up into the world of the spirit. So, I don't know, and kind of kick out religion. But this is where we're at, at this point. And I can tell you, I had a lot of people who wished me many times to end up burned on the stake. Okay? 
But now it has changed. Americans have evolved it so much. They came up a long way. And they are willing to cast aside their fears. Now, there are some people that are completely reptilious, religiously poisoned. They cannot talk to you without throwing a verse of the Bible. They tell me I'm going to go to hell. They, they are really, really infected. And there is no way that these people are salvageable. They are ruined. They are finished. They are supposed to endorse uh, the darkness. And the, the young soul, they might need a few more uh, reincarnation maybe they'd be able to get themselves out of this nasty darkness. But for the time being, that's where we're at. I'm having fun. And I'm booked all the way up to next year. <laughs> With coronavirus, people are going crazy. They constantly, constantly. So if anybody wants the reading, you just order your reading and just forget about it. And then uh, who knows, maybe somebody, uh, uh, maybe I'm going to stop working earlier and catch up. Because I can do only two readings a day. I, I, do, I don't do more than that. So every weekend I do two, four readings. And I got, I don't know, I can't even count how much my wife has set me up in the future. So I'm doing a good job physically and spiritually to help the world. And that brings good karma. So, and there's a lot of people that say, oh, you should give your stuff for free if you're so gifted. And I say, well, you're going to go to the dentist and you're going to not pay for the dentist to fix you? I'm a soul doctor. Okay, I, 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 I get paid for all the life has taught me, the pain and the suffering that I went through. It, it needs to be repaid and got things for that. Uh, we are, uh, my wife and I, we, we are so much in demand. We, you know, COVID-19 never really existed for me from the first day. I knew, I knew that this dragon was a mercurial dragon. Mercury or a Gemini dragon means driving, means communication, means writing, being, right. being on the move. So I decided a few months ago to take my CDL license and to take all my endorsement. Little did I know the impact. Uh, I, even though I saw a serious infection of lungs, a serious new disease, a new virus was going to plague humanity, that's all I knew. But I felt something was telling me, take your driving license, take your CDL license. Oh my gosh, it's been the best thing that I could ever have done because I always want to travel to America. I wanted to know this country. God knows where I've been everywhere and I keep enjoying the sunset and the sunrise at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. I get to see the desert. I see lakes. I see cities. I, everything that I wanted to do. As far as America is concerned, I thought when I retire, I'm going to get the mobile home and I'm going to visit the United States. I'm doing it and I'm getting paid a lot of money. What else do you want? COVID-19 didn't exist right. with me. I have so been writing of time on the show, I just want to tie it back into the ET. So they were helping you through your childhood and, and you think that was ET driven to get you to the United States. Absolutely. So how are they, there's so no how are they still Right now, besides the missing time, how what other ways have they been interacting with you over the years? Well, it's all, it, it's all um, a psychic thing. It's all psychical. It's in your head. Everybody right. is being bombarded every second by the draconis who wants them to be positive, to create beautiful painting, beautiful music, or by the reptilians, by being negative, by being insecure, by fearing death, by fearing coronavirus, by being nasty to other people on Facebook every single day. But if you're not conscious on how those E.T., the good and the bad one, are interacting with you, okay, you're going to be a robot, you are going to simply respond to your stars, which are going to be manipulated by those entities, either for good or for worse. Okay? He goes both ways. And this is where people have to understand there is no such a thing on, on bad and good, but there is such a thing as good and bad. So when you are aware of what's going on, with the good and the bad it is. Now there is dozens and dozens of names for extraterrestrial. Some call them the fallen angel. Some call them the garden angel. Uh, you know, they have wings if you want to. And so, you know, there is names that have been created by so many people. But there is only two groups, the good one and the bad one. Pretty much like humans. 
There's millions of humans, and you have a hell of a lot of good people out there, and a hell of a lot of nasty infected people out there. It's just a, a repercussion that's what's going on above your head, which you're not aware of. So, when you, if your UCI, or your unique celestial identity, is earthy, earthy meaning down to earth, practical, with a strong Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, um, you are going to see life through your five limited human senses. But if you're an air sign, curious, or a water sign, spiritual, then you're going to be able to connect with what I'm saying. This is why you can only love me or hate me. This is why those who are young soul who cannot enter the intuitional domain of my work are going to think I'm crazy, I'm lying, I'm making up stories, uh, this is not right, it's against God, whatever it is. Okay, it's against their religion. So you have this group of uh, sub-humans which have not yet raised to super-human. Again, positive and negative. And then there are people in between. So all I am doing here is to stimulate people to think outside of the box and not judging my delivery. Because as I said, when I'm on TV, when the radio, I come out real strong. And they have a tendency to assume that my confidence and my cosmic wisdom is perceived by these people as an ego trip. And that's sad. Dr. Curry, final minute, and the music will start. So how can people reach you? Very simple. Go to www. Dr. Turi, D-R-T-U-R-I dot com. Join my YouTube channel. Learn much more of all what's going on with the ETs, agendas. Uh, watch my uh, two movies. I have two movies on the Amazon Prime. Uh, leave me a little comment. I will answer you. Uh, read my newsletters. And most of all, join the Cosmic Code. Be part of the over 10,000 people that are following our daily guidance and predictions and regenerate from God cosmic design. Thank you very much for having me, Janet. God bless you guys. Be safe out there. And then uh, we'll probably see you again sometimes. And watch my next newsletter. will be involving your show, the link of your show, and the four dates I gave you with a little bit more of explanation. Good night, my friends. Excellent. Perfect timing. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Curry. Thank you, Deborah DeFranco. Thank you, listeners. Thank you.